What's up guys? It's Jason. Yeah, this is the video. This is the video. Alright, so here we are. Three strikes and we're out. Uh, we're going to talk about that and some other things um, that we'll go through in the video. Some stuff that I'd like to see happen for the LEGO YouTube community as a whole. Some stuff I'd like to see happen. Uh, we're also going to talk about what happened. And we're going to talk about the future of the brick show okay so that's what we're gonna do we can jump in it right now as you can see I'm not super bothered um, I'm not really we're not really devastated about losing the channel um, the YouTube part of our business has not been a critical part for quite some time um, as you guys know YouTube in general has taken a big hit the Lego channels in general um, have taken somewhat of a hit in views, not just for us, but for everybody. Um, the big channels are also down in views, um, probably related to Lego sales, from gaming, Roblox, you know, the whole deal. But what I'm going to do in the video is first I'm going to say that we have no hard feelings to Lego. Um, I wrote them a letter. We apologize for what we did. I'm going to briefly talk about what happened here and uh, how we got the three strikes and then also just kind of explain the environment in which Lego journalists, Lego blogs and YouTube channels that handle Lego news, kind of what they have to decide and kind of what their culture is like and, and posting things and um, how things are handled and maybe it should be a little bit different, a little better. Um, maybe you disagree, that's fine. Um, but the first thing I want to do is just say that we're not making any excuses. We got the three strikes. We're apologetic about it. We've apologized directly to Lego. I wrote them a letter last night. I sent it to them. Um, we are not asking for the channel back. Um, I will talk about that at the end of this video. Uh, but first, I'm going to quickly just kind of go through the three strikes. The first one was for and Harry Potter, some Harry Potter images um, that happened right before they started releasing them officially through the different media outlets, New York Times, I think, and USA Today. There were some bigger outlets that got the release, the exclusive release on those. There were some images, though, that were kind of circulating before then. I can't remember if they're on the white background or if they were like pictures of flyers or what. Um, at this point, what does it really matter? I will say they were not watermarked images. Um, a lot of people are saying that we've been posting watermarked images. Well, not a lot of people, just a couple of people. Um, but I want you guys to make sure that you don't, um, that you understand that that was not happening. Um, we were not posting hundreds of watermarked images. We named the videos that got taken down, um, leaked. They actually weren't leaked. Um, the blogs, you've all, you all posted the same images um, for the most part, not the ones that we got in trouble for. Um, but the ones that were named leaked images, they weren't actually leaked, it was just the way that they were being named. Um, but that was the first one. The second one was for the Porg image. That one was watermarked. Um, we will admit, I will admit that that one was posted. Um, it did have the watermark. It should not have been posted. And I do not blame LEGO at all for taking that one down. It should have been taken down. And then the third one, at that point, we began to kind of say, okay, let me go back and look at some stuff that had been posted to see if there's going to be any issues. Um, we took down videos that we think were safe within the last 20 days, kind of before we went to the fall released, fall set release deal in New York City. Um, one of our team members went there. A lot of stuff was revealed. Most of those videos um, before then all had that. But there was one that didn't, uh, that we didn't catch. It had an Aquaman picture, minifigure picture in it um, that was posted all over. It was on comicbook.com. It was on all the comic book websites. And it was there for a few days. Um, usually that's kind of how we decide. Obviously, we should not have decided this way. We decide, okay, it's been up on all these big websites for a number of days, so it must be safe. Um, but this was a video 30 days old, and then that was the third strike, a video that was 30 days old, 
um, for an image that did get pulled down from those comic book sites, but it was it was not within the period that we were looking that we were kind of following it four or five days. And we were like, it must be safe. They're still up there. We posted it, and then 30 days or so after it, that was the third strike. Um, so anyone saying that all of our stuff was watermarked images, that is not true. The poor one was should not have been posted. Um, obviously, the other two should not have been posted, right? And um, look, I don't fault Lego. Lego can do whatever they want. Um, it's their right, and we respect their actions. That's what I said in the letter. Um, we're not asking for the channel back. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, and also, it is somewhat difficult to always navigate what's okay and what's not okay. Um, we should have probably played it safe. Um, Steven and I have not really had a really good involvement in our news videos. We've been really um, kind of focused on other parts of the business. A lot of it non-LEGO related, um, some of it retail related, and we weren't really seeing everything that was being posted. We had a team member kind of doing the news, and we should have been looking closely at what was being posted. That's my fault. I own that. Um, and so at this point, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. And so where we stand today is the main channel's gone. Uh, we're not going to ask for it back. And the reason that we're no longer going to pursue getting it back, um, we did try to send a few emails to you know, the email that you get when you get the takedown notice. We get no reply. Um, I did send the, the letter of apology, and I don't, I don't really care to have a reply. Um, well, I, do, I mean, it would be nice to get a reply, uh, but if I don't, it's not a big deal. Um, there's a lot of great people at LEGO, a lot of talented people. We have no hard feelings at all. Um, and a big part of it is, is that this, this YouTube stuff, we, Stephen and I had been burnt out on it for quite some time, for about two or three years. We were doing the review stuff pretty heavy, but that stuff really, doing it all day every day, really, you got to really love it at a level that you're willing to wake up every day, build a set, film it, edit it. You may get two sets done a day, and that's all you're doing for the day. Um, when stuff, when there's new product releases, like it is bananas. And we did it for, what, six years or so, and it was a lot of fun. We loved it. But we also have kids. Um, I've got four kids. Steven's got three kids, and we got burnt out on it. We were traveling like crazy to all these different LEGO conventions. We were doing the review stuff, and it was a lot on our family. Um, it was a lot on us. We didn't sleep much. Um, guys like Jang Bricks, who review all that stuff, ton I give him tons of credit. To be able to do that year in and year out is extremely difficult. And he does it as a, at a really high level. Um, so props to him, because that is not easy what he continues to do. Um, so we just got burnt out and the channel for us became more of a nostalgic thing. It wasn't really a something that we depended on for our living. Um, it was something that we had started. It was really cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, and it became more just some, somewhere where we would, you know, report news and we did a lot less reviews. I mean, you guys know, a lot of you know that it, over the last few years, it's it's taken less and less of a of a priority. You, you haven't seen as many videos posted. Definitely not as many with Stephen and I. Um, and that's that's honestly that's the reason why. Now, one thing that I do hope changes. Um, will it? I don't know. For your guys' sake, YouTubers, I do hope that this changes. Um, so I'm gonna. This is how it works. Copyright infringing images. These are images of sets that Lego doesn't want you to post because it's about a future product, okay? Um, it's not always clear when it's certain set, when is it okay to post it, when it is not okay. If it has the watermark confidential, it's not, it's never okay. Um, there's been kind of conflicting on when it is okay, when it doesn't have that. Um, again, 
None of the videos we had up had the confidential watermark, except the Porg one. That should not have been posted, and um, but it was. But normally the way it works, so if you have a website, so brickshow.com, we have that. Um, every major Lego blog and the big YouTube new channels that, that do news, at one point or another, they've gotten takedown notices. Okay, when it happens on your website, there's no three strikes and you're out. Like you get these, you get it from a real person from Lego that says, hey, we don't want this out. Can you take it down? You reply, yes, we'll take it down. Thanks, appreciate it, and life goes on. Um, that's how it works when you have a website. Right? There's a real person that, that communicates with you. When you have a YouTube channel, that is not that does not happen. Um, you get a takedown notice. You get no communication from an actual person, um, and it's it's not Lego's fault. That's how it works in general. Um, whether it's the music or anything, um, you if you get leaked images of the new iPhone, like I'm sure Apple does the same thing with those images. Um, the music ones, those are actually heavily abused by those companies. You get them even though you have the rights. There's probably was 30 or 40 tracks that I got copyrighted ones from the music ones that I actually bought the license. We paid for license for the song in it and we still get a copyright thing. Not the takedown ones, but the ones where you're not making the money, they're making the money. Um, and we actually paid for them. That's a business model for certain companies. They just do that they find anything that contains their songs even though I've paid for them through a subscription service where they know their songs are they'll still tag it and it just becomes kind of annoying to go in in each video and write them up and wait for a reply and get and prove to them that you've bought it um, but the Lego ones um, we have a website they contact you we have a YouTube channel it's just a takedown notice there's no personal communication um, I think there could be, like, they know it's our channel, they know we have a website, there's a contact button there, there's a contact button within your YouTube channel. Um, I wish, I really wish that they would use that more, and look, these are the influencers, these are the people marketing your stuff for free, pushing your product, and the only communication that you get from them as a YouTuber is a takedown notice. It's, you know, kind of scary, right? Because you put all this work in. So that is one area where I hope that gets better for you YouTubers. Now, we did contact YouTube, the YouTube side of thing, we did contact YouTube. Um, they're not helpful. Uh, they just say contact the claimant. If the claimant releases it, um, that's all we can do. And that's fine. Uh, we have contacted the claimant multiple times. Um, no replies. And so, um, that's the way it'll stand. That's that's okay. Now the YouTube side side of it is actually very bizarre for me. Um, they we said, hey, can you look at our case? And they just said you need to contact the claimant, and we don't get involved. And look, that's fine. It's their their platform. They can they can handle things the way they want. We've again we went out and uh, emailed the claimant a number of times. Um, no reply and so at that point um, <clears throat> now the crazy thing I think is the YouTube side of it uh, the three strikes you're out um, obviously if you have a website you get those three strikes you're not out right because you're at your website um, there's not a YouTube or a Lego blog that hasn't gotten a copyright takedown um, again it's done in a, a much better professional way um, than the way YouTube handles it. But on YouTube, it's three strikes and you're out. And we emailed them just to see, you know, if they step in or at all and just kind of hear the story of like what happened and how we, we can resolve it. Uh, they just say reach out to the claimant. Uh, we reached out to the email of the claimant and we've never gotten a reply um, from those email addresses from the, the Lego claimant. And then we did have a little bit of conversation with a guy, U.S. guy from Lego about it. And he said he was going to look into it. And I don't know if he did, if he didn't. Um, but at this point, you know, 
we're really, it's not that big a deal. We're not interested really uh, in getting, getting it back. If we did, we'll think about what we want to do, um, but it's not something that we're really pursuing any longer. And here's the craziest thing about the YouTube side of things. Like, okay, we have no channel anymore because we posted some images of some toys that are coming out in a couple months. Um, there are YouTubers on there that are white supremacists and there are there's one that posted images of dead bodies from suicide like those people are still on YouTube but if you post pictures of a toy that's coming out in a couple months you're gone and so look it's been nine years nine great years we were super privileged to be able to do this for nine years um, we got to meet a lot of great kids, a lot of great adults that share and talk about our, our love for Lego. Um, are there YouTubers out there that, look, they want to capitalize on this whole deal, right? They want to make videos, they want to make fun, they think it's cool, they think it's funny. Um, that's the disappointing part about the, the YouTube community. The non-YouTube community actually isn't like that so much. Um, a lot of it's because it's really driven more by adults. And so you, you know, people act more like adults, right? The YouTube, a good portion of it, not all, there's some really great YouTubers that are, that are adults or act grown up, right? Um, but then there is, there, there's this sliver that's, that still has some grown up to do, right? And that's unfortunate. Look, we don't, we don't care what people like that say. And so that would be my, if you guys are listening, kids are listening, if somebody attacks you or tries to make you feel bad, or makes fun of you. Um, look, if that's where, if they're at such a low point in their life where that's how they get their joy, I kind of feel bad for them, to be quite honest. And you don't listen to people like that. If we listened to people like that, then we would have given up 2009, December 31st, when we first started the channel and not done anything else because anybody that's on YouTube for any length of time has a shark skin because you cannot do this you cannot do this whole thing and um, come out of it and continue to do it over and over despite what people say unless you have thick skin one of the things that I really hope happens over the next five to ten years on YouTube number one YouTube has some things that they need to work on um, the toy industry as a, as a whole on YouTube has taken a major hit your earnings are terrible um, they are. I know in videos you're acting like they're not, but they're terrible. Um, your view counts have probably, a lot of you have probably taken a hit. Your revenues, for nine years they've been going down, okay? We know the revenue stuff, right? Nine years, if you compare year over year, they've been going down for nine years in a row. That's not a good sign. Um, but a lot of you do it as a hobby, and that's awesome, and you should keep doing it. It's just fun, and it is a really good platform for that but what I would like to see is you have some really great builders who have channels that are not super popular um, but they're really great builders which is what the Lego stuff is uh, really it's all about the building right you have some really talented builders or up-and-coming builders and they have channels and they may not speak great yet or they may not you know have all the cool graphics and the whole deal um, I'd like to see that part of the community kind of rise up, keep getting better. Um, there's so many channels now that are, you know, a lot of it is just reviews, it's unboxings, and look, a lot of you have watched my unboxings, right? And I kind of always wonder like what people 150 years, 200 years from now, when they look back at YouTube and look at what were these people into, and they're like, why, why did they spend so much time watching people open boxes? And I think that'll be a question that they're going to have to figure out. Because um, it'll seem odd, I think, in like 200 years from now. Um, and, it'll, and look, I'll be in the videos too. They'll be wondering why people are watching this, this, this guy with a beard open a box. Um, and that's, I mean, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I would really like to see over the next 5, 10 years on, on YouTube, some of the builders' channels rise up. Um, and less of the review, unboxing type of stuff. Um, you know, just kind of where they're at an equal level, where we're give, giving a little bit more of the exposure and the, and the viewership to 
to the builders. Right now, my favorite YouTubers that I still actually watch um, focus on the building, right? So it's beyond the brick. We're friends with those guys, but they're really good dudes. And they focus on the builders and give the builders who, you know, they fo the builders focus on building. They don't always have YouTube channels. The best builders in the world don't have YouTube channels. And so they give them that exposure and um, open up our eyes so that we can see this great stuff, get the, get the mind of a builder, ask them the questions about what they, what they built. Um, so that's one that I watch. Another one that I still watch is JK Brickworks. Super talented brick or, um, a builder as well. Does some amazing, amazing stuff. So where do we go from here? I talked about it at the beginning. Look, the YouTube stuff is not a big deal for us. It's just not. It's the first thing we did. Um, it had a lot of nostalgia. The last year or so, we were kind of keeping it going for nostalgic reasons. Um, but I talked about, Stephen and I, the burnout, right? Um, look, the website is still going. That's still up. The Brick Show is not dead. The YouTube channel is dead, right? The YouTube channel is dead. The Brick Show is not dead. Um, we still have Facebook. We still have 86,000 followers over there. Uh, we'll continue to post our content there. Uh, probably will be a little more. Um, and then the blog. The blog is actually one of the top LEGO websites out there, um, which has really happened in the last two years. It has just exploded. Albert's done a really good job writing, and we're getting between 10 to 15,000 visitors a day um, over there. So that is still there. The YouTube stuff is, is, it just wasn't a big part of our thing. So we had talked from time to time about shutting it down or just not putting out really any content on it for the last year or two. Stephen and I had internal conversations about that. Um, this kind of forces us to do it. And to be quite honest with you, we're a little bit relieved because just playing that whole game, right? Playing the whole game of trying to be first, trying to get it up. And look, we, in a lot of ways, we invented that game, right? We were the first ones to go on eBay and get sets early. And people criticized us, just too good actually criticized us for doing that. Now they all do it, right? Because that's the game you have to play. You have to get the news up first, or you have to make a video that's more shocking than the next guys. That's how YouTube is today, which I don't necessarily think is a great thing. Um, look, that's why all the Brick Show is terminated videos those go up because we got to get views right we got to get the shock about it and I'm actually a relieved to be out of that game I'm out of that game so now when I buy a Lego set I get to enjoy it I get to enjoy it and here's one I bought here's one I bought recently Here's what I bought, my recent purchase, the Tron set. Um, I think this was designed by Brick Bros UK, which is another great channel because they, you know, they're focused on the building part of it. Tron Legacy is my favorite movie. Definitely top three, but probably my favorite. I watch it every year on my birthday. I bought that and I got to enjoy the build. See, when you do the YouTube thing, you don't always get to enjoy the build because it's work, right? It's work. You got to get it up quick to get those views and then you got to edit it and it's it it becomes work. It's fun work. But at some point it transitioned to too much work and we weren't having fun anymore. And Steven and I are always like, look, if you're not having fun doing something, then you need to find something else to do. And we liked having the brick shows a property, but doing the videos day in and day out, the grind of the reviews and all that uh, trying to be first, trying to get the set, paying way too much money on eBay so you could be first. Did it pay for itself? A lot of people don't have a calculator that are Lego YouTubers. Um, they'll buy a $60 set, they'll review it. Uh, if that video doesn't get like, because earnings are so bad, 80 to 100,000 views, you lost money. Unless you resold it. But you lost money. Like that whole thing. Um, we're somewhat relieved to like just be over like it's over um, and so 
the question is, are you guys going to do anything else on YouTube? And to be honest with you, we're not, this channel, assuming this channel stays around, I don't know, YouTube could take this one down too, for all I know. Um, we will post this video over on our website where it cannot be taken down. But we're not transitioning this channel into the new Brick Show. Okay, that's not going to happen. If we do anything here, um, it'll be because we want to, not because we have to. It'll be because we enjoy doing it and it's fun and it's just something that we do. Um, but right now, we haven't even talked about that. We don't have any plans on doing anything like that. Um, there's other stuff we got going on that we got to focus on, and it's not this. But I do want to thank everybody that has watched over the years. You'll probably see my face again at some point. Uh, Steven's face, I'm sure we'll do something. Um, look, we still got the other properties that we're doing things over there on. We're still having a lot of fun doing that stuff. Um, but it's not this channel is not going to turn into anything that, that that channel did. But look, thank you guys. Thank you for those of you who, the kind words, I'm still getting emails, I'm getting tweets, I'm getting Instagram direct messages. We are reading all that. I want to thank you guys for all of that. Hope I answered all the questions. I will respond to comments for a bit down below. Look, if you want to be a jerk, be a jerk. I don't care. We don't care. If that's who you are at your core, that's, up, that's something you got to deal with, right? There were a lot of you, other people that said, look, there's, not, there's some negative energy out there, but I don't care. We don't care. So you want to say something mean down there, that's fine. Everyone can stare at, like, what a jerk you are. And we'll reply to the comments that um, you guys, maybe we didn't answer something in the video. So we'll do that. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, you guys keep building. We'll see you.